we already had quite a few devices from ID Cooling on the table. Some better than others and some like to stretch the word thickness. But for today it's going to be all about the FX360 Pro and as the name suggests this is supposed to be for the pros. We got no RGB, all black fans, all black water block, nothing but performance enhancing black color. It comes in the usual type of AIO box, includes mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, a tube of thermal paste and two of these tube holders to make everything look tidy. By the looks of it, it seems like a well-made AIO. We got a 21 FPI radiator, or that's what I counted. We don't have too much overhang on both ends. The tubes are 655 millimeters long, which for once is a nice length. So uh, they did great there. They are braided and adjustable at the water block end. We got three of ID Cooling's in-house made fans spinning at up to 1800 RPM whilst pushing up to 82.5 CFM at up to 2.55 millimeters of H2O. All of them featuring a very short four pin PVM cable, which can be daisy chained into a block and then extend it using the included cable to run off a single header. The pump is the one thing that I am not as happy about. It's spinning on top of the copper base and it's spinning at up to 2800 RPM whilst using a 3-pin voltage controlled connection. But it's not the voltage control connection that bothers me here, but the fact that I can hear it. It is a subtle whining, not very very loud, it isn't like it isn't even really picked up by my dB meter during, during the noise test, but I hear it slightly and I shouldn't. Other than that, there really isn't that much to say about it. It's all black, clean design, I like it. So uh, let's just jump right into the installation part. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate, make sure to take the right one because there are two, and then slap it behind the motherboard. From there, place the appropriate LGA spacers on top. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with these weird looking but easy to grab things after putting on the rubber protection thingies. From there, slap some thermal paste onto the chip, take the retention bracket for AMD or Intel depending on your system, twist it onto the water block pump combo and then screw that sucker down. And with the installation covered, let's have a look at the benchmarks. First up is Intel, where we benchmark a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. And after running it at full speed, we slowly lower the fan speed, whilst keeping the pump at 100% and we record the noise and performance to create a noise to performance curve. At 120 watts going through the socket, the ID Cooling FX360 Pro didn't really look like a pro. At 29.3 degrees C above ambient, it kept the temperature at bay, sure, but considering how many 360s or even 240s did a better job at this, let's say a gaming-like workload, it's not really noteworthy at all. On the flip side, of course, there are 360s that perform worse. Like, it's not a bad 360, it's just far from the best one. The corresponding noise to performance graph pretty much reflects exactly that. Sure, it's keeping the same type of curve as, for example, the Montec Hyperflow or Lightloop 360, it just does so slightly with an offset temperature and needs some fan speed reduction until the noise to performance ratio of the three will align. Over at 250 watts, this does change quite a bit. At 55.1 degrees C above ambient, the FX360 now lands significantly higher on the performance chart. Still nothing revolutionary, but definitely better. For the noise to performance chart, it is still kind of the same story though. It starts off at about 2 dB louder than the light loop and it takes about 60% of the max fan speed for them to align. And if we look at the Montec 360, that one is still offset, keeping the CPU always cooler or always being quieter no matter what you want to normalize here. At 320 watts going through the socket, this basically becomes a cold plate test. And we allow the CPU to go up to 110 degrees C before stopping the test, because otherwise there will be no coolers left. And at 75 degrees C above ambient, the FX360 Pro landed on exactly the same spot if looking at the whole graph, which isn't bad, mind you. And if we count from top down, it makes the 11th spot, so there's that. The corresponding noise to performance chart also looks slightly better. Now actually competing against the Montec Hyperflow at the very top and even outperforming the light loop for a very brief moment if you normalize the performance or noise to the right spot. Over on AMD we benchmark on a 7950X3D by averaging the sustained clock speed across all cores at any given fan speed to get a noise to performance curve. On here however 
quite some things have changed. First off is the fact that all coolers that come with an offset mounting for AMD CPUs are performing significantly better, like the light loop. And unlike Intel, the FX360 performs slightly better almost all across the board compared to the Montec Hyperflow. Sure, there, once you go towards the end or once you drop below 37 dB, the Montec keeps a slightly better ratio across all the cores, but at max, and basically everything above 37 dB, which mind you, th we have a noise floor of 35, so 37 is like... Anyway, there the FX360 outperforms the Montec AIO by a dozen or a few dozen megahertz. So performance-wise, on Intel, I would describe the ID cooling AIO as almost a light loop, just not quite there. And the noise to performance on the light loop is just a tad better. It starts off a bit heavy if you are doing things like gaming, basically LiDAR workloads. And as you go up with the wattage, the difference becomes smaller and smaller until it, this and the light loop become almost equal. For AMD, it's a totally different story. It might differ on non-3D chips or chips with higher workloads, but coolers with offset mountings are just better, way better. However, credit where credit is due, the ID cooling one is better than the Montec AIO, even if that wasn't the case for Intel. So would I recommend it or not? Well, for AMD, I would just advise everybody to take an AIO with an offset mounting, like it's that simple. And for Intel, it will do okay, even with things like a 4900K, but there are just better ones around. On Intel, as I just said, this is basically a slightly downscaled Light Loop 360. And all of that is just one side of the coin. The other side is the price. That thing goes for just under 60 USD on Amazon. 60 USD, that's less than half of what the Light Loop will cost you. That's ridiculously low, even for Arctic standards. And yes, Tech Power Up is absolutely right. This thing has, is a great value product. If I had awards to give away, this thing would for sure be called the greatest value I know of right now. And everything I said before, the things about it being average performance, but it's still true, it has average performance. I have dozens of AIOs that will outperform it but pretty much every single one of those will cost you twice or three times as much. So for me, if you're trying to build a high-end PC and you are trying to find a way to save 50, 60, 70 bucks on a cooler that might not be as good, but still will do an amazing job, that thing is bomb. Like 60 USD bomb. I love how I'm always writing my scripts without knowing the actual price. And as I'm getting to the last few paragraphs, I'm googling the price and then the tone of the video just changes. It starts off like, yeah, it's average, it's average, it's average. And then, oh yeah, it's a it's, uh, great value, great value right there. But okay, this should be everything on the ID Cooling FX360 Pro. And at this point, a huge thank you to ID Cooling for sending this bomb of a price to performance AIO over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance, except for the NDA stuff, because you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to rename this AIO. They can leave the pro in there, but it should be like professionally affordable. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the ID Cooling DX240 Max. This thing is supposedly 38 millimeters thick, but you will never guess where they got that number from. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.